Hello everyone, welcome to this module on pairing. My name is uh, Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this module, we'll look into the two different kinds of uh, pairing supported by the OCI Virtual Cloud Network service. Let's start with local pairing. As the name suggests there on the slide, local pairing basically means you are connecting multiple VCNs within the same region. So the graphic shows here, uh, you have a region, Oracle Cloud uh, uh, Data Center region, and we have uh, a VCN1 with an address space of 10.0.0.0 slash 16, and we have a VCN2 with an address space of 192.168.0.0 slash 16, and we want to connect these two VCNs, that kind of peering connection is called local peering. Um, why do we do this? The reason we do this is the resources within these two VCNs, both in the same region, can communicate using private IP addresses so they don't have to go through uh, your public IP addresses. Now, there can be multiple scenarios for this, right? You can have a management VCN uh, which talks to multiple VCNs within, within the company. Uh, you could have um, a bastion host uh, talking with multiple VCNs. You could have a load balancer uh, or a DMZ, which is in a public, uh, uh, in a VCN, separate VCN, uh, and then it could be talking to other VCNs, uh, which are not in uh, the DMZ. So there are various uh, scenarios why you would use uh, local peering uh, all within the same region. Now, how does this work? Uh, the first thing we do is we create this uh, gateway, as we saw in the previous module, uh, called a local peering gateway, uh, which routes the traffic between these two VCNs. You can see here, there's a local peering gateway which gets created on each of the individual VCNs. And as we have seen in the previous modules, once you create this local peering gateway, you have to specify the routes for the IP packets. Uh, otherwise, they don't know where to go. So for this uh, local peering gateway on this VCN, the target is 192.168/16, right? So all the packets should go there. And for the other uh, VCN and the local pairing gateway, uh, the address uh, is 10.0/16, uh, so that traffic goes onto the other VCN, right? Pretty logical. Uh, and the other thing you would do here, which is not on the slide because we have not covered, is you also need to open the virtual virtual firewalls so you can let the traffic uh, in. Uh, into this VCN, from this VCN, uh, and vice versa. There are a couple of things you need to uh, understand. It comes up in the exams also. The first one is the two VCNs in the pairing relationship uh, cannot have overlapping ciders. So if you have an overlapping cider here, uh, let's say 10 slash uh, 0 slash 24 address space here, uh, you, it would not work, right? Because slash 24 is a subset of uh, slash 16 there. So uh, the peering will, uh, you will not be able to establish a peering connection and, and so on and so forth. So that's number one. Number two is peering is not transitive. What that means is if you have this VCN peered with this particular VCN, and let's say there is a VCN three, which is peered with VCN two, it doesn't mean that VCN one is peered with VCN three. It doesn't mean that VCN one can be peered with VCN three, through transiting through VCN2. That's transitive routing. It's not supported. So if you have three VCNs, one, two, and three, one and two are peered, two and three are peered, you want to peer one to three, you have to create an explicit peering connection between one and three. Transitive is not supported. Now, what is remote peering? Same concept, but now you're peering, you're connecting VCNs in different regions. Why would you do that? The, the most obvious use case is disaster recovery. You want to do uh, some kind of DRs, you have your VCNs connected, uh, and you so you could you know take backups, you could do DR between, between regions, right? So same concept as before, now you can see two different regions, Ash1 and Phoenix, let's say in, in US, uh, in, the, in the US, and you have VCN1 here, same address space as before, VCN2, but now they are in different regions. Now to do this, it's a little bit more involved process, because remember anytime uh, your traffic goes out of the VCN, uh, you have different kinds of gateways. Uh, this time, the gateway we use is the DRG, uh, which we saw earlier. And what we do in the dynamic routing gateway is we create this uh, uh, feed, this capability called remote peering connection. So we create this uh, remote peering connection, and that acts as a connection point uh, for a remotely peered uh, VCN. Uh, and same as before, uh, 
uh, you need to uh, to provide the uh, path for the IP packets in in the route table. So for this uh, DRG, uh, the the path is to go to this particular VCN and vice versa. Um, like local peering, um, the two VCNs in the peering relationship cannot have overlapping ciders. And again, transitive routing is is not supported uh, uh, also with uh, with remote peering. Well, with that, uh, we already looked at different uh, gateways which OCI supports today. Internet gateway, bi-directional going to internet, NAT gateway, unidirectional uh, going from private subnets, uh, doing net network address translation, uh, going to the internet. Service gateway, uh, OCI going from a private subnet to OCI public services like object storage. Uh, and then dynamic routing gateway, taking the private traffic to your on-prem environment. Now, the two more uh, additional connectivity options we just saw in this module uh, our local peering gateway where you peer connect two VCNs in the same region and a remote peering connection uh, which uh, is part of DRG where we connect privately connect two VCNs in different regions. The idea here is you are connecting VCNs uh, privately so resources can communicate using private IP addresses. So let's quickly uh, look into a uh, demo of uh, local peering gateway. This is the setup we had uh, in the previous two demos where we had a web server, where a bastion server, both in public subnets and uh, a database in a private subnet. And we were um, using uh, internet gateway to go out and we were using a NAT gateway here to get some updates for this database running here, right? Anyway, we are not going to touch any of these, uh, these um, um, uh, subnets and the hosts running within those subnets for this demo. What we are going to do is in the same region, we are going to create another VCN uh, and a private subnet because I really don't need a public here. Uh, and we are going to create a, an instance within the private subnet. And then we are going to do uh, a local peering gateway uh, so we can peer these two, uh, we can peer these two uh, networks. Now, for illustration purposes and to save some time, I already have uh, this instance running and it's a private public subnet, so I can SSH into it. Uh, but this one is a private subnet, right? Uh, and my this VCN, and this particular subnet I have already created and I've already instantiated this particular instance. So we don't spend time uh, doing these things, which, which you know, seem pretty logical uh, the way the, the setup should, should be. All right, so let me uh, jump to the console. And right here you can see demo VCN is the one we just talked about, right? So this is 10 slash 16 uh, and it has subnet A and subnet B as we were discussing in the, in the slides, right, subnet A. This is the web server. I'm going to SSH into the web server, right? Um, and then there is no local peering gateway connected here. So you can see that uh, created here. So you can see there is nothing here. And if I go jump quickly to the other VCN, I just created demo VCN2, address space of 192.168.1.0 slash 24. It has a private subnet here, uh, but again, you see no local peering gateway, nothing created here, right? Now, if I quickly jump to my uh, compute instances, you can see uh, from the previous demo, we have a web server running here, right? So this is the web server we are going to uh, use to uh, SSH uh, to test the private connectivity uh, and, and ping the other instance, right? So let me just quickly SSH into this instance. And this is the, the web server we have been using, uh, uh, using for the other demos. Now, I also have my, um, my, uh, private my instance running in this private subnet here, right? So I already have it created. Uh, you can see that it runs in this private subnet uh, and this is part of the uh, this is part of the other uh, VCN with this 192.168.1.0 slash 24 address space. So I pick this uh, private IP here. You can see it doesn't have a public IP. And if I try to ping um, this IP uh, right now from, from this particular um, server, I get no response, right? Because it seems logical. I'm trying to go from here to here. There is no local peering connection here. There are no route tables, security list open. So of course this is not going to work, right? So if I see here, ping is just you know, black holing. Uh, the packet's black holing. I'm not able to ping that particular server. So let's change that. So first things first, I'll go to my uh, VCN. And for my demo VCN, uh, I need to create, I need to open my security list uh, and, and create a, a local peering gateway, change my route table. So let's do all that. So this is the default security list I'm using. So let me add an ingress rule here 
which says that all the traffic coming from 168 uh, I'm going to allow uh, and right here this is the address space for my second VCN and I'll say all protocol because I'm going to do ping so let me just open it here pretty straightforward uh, if I don't open the firewall rules I'm not going to be able to ping the, the other VCN uh, and, the, and the instance running in, in the subnet there now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a local peering gateway here um, because this is both sides you need a local peering gateway in order for uh, the peering to work right so I said local peering gateway for demo VCN pretty straightforward and then last thing I need to do is I need to send the packets to that local peering gateway so I already have a entry in my route table here for the internet gateway and if you recall this is basically taking the packets from here to the internet gateway so let's quickly go ahead and add another rule for local peering gateway so I say local peering gateway is my destination and what is my destination CIDR block I want to reach it's 192.168.1.0 slash 24 so this is the path uh, for packets destined uh, for this IP I want them to go through the local peering gateway right pretty straightforward so I click add route rules here and then pretty much I am done with with this particular uh, VCN so let me go to the other VCN and do the same kind of things so first things first I need to open the security list here so I for this one I need to open the security list coming from the other VCN right so this uh, is the other VCN I address space I could actually limit it just to the subnet I could do that but right now just for illustration purposes let me just open the whole VCN so I add it here and then I need to create a local peering gateway here create a local peering gateway and then in my route table I you can see there is no route here so I need to make this a destination for all the traffics destined for this particular VCN so I would pick this and now the couple of things remaining I need to come to my local peering gateway and establish a peering connection uh, because we created all these assets we have not joined uh, the, the we have not joined uh, the local peering gateways themselves right so I pick demo VCN and then I pick the demo VCN uh, local peering gateway right and I say establish peering uh, connection and you would see it says pending and within a few seconds this would change to uh, peer if I go back to my other demo VCN you can see here that it says peer connected to a peer and now if I come here bingo I can see that I'm able to ping uh, my instance uh, using private IP address because uh, my local peering gateway is connected here right so you can see now I'm pinging from web to this instance using this local peering gateway and it's 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 working here if I go ahead and if I remove the peering connection if let's say I terminate one of these uh, for terminating I have to first remove the rules so if I go here and if I let's say just remove this rule right I say I just stop the peering you would see that my ping stopped right away so I'm, I lost that connection and I'm not able to ping anymore uh, so thank you for watching this demo hopefully it gave you a good flavor of how remote uh, local peering works remote peering works similarly but it's a little bit more complex you have to create DRGs etc on both sides um, thank you for watching this demo if you have time please join the next lecture where we talk about security list and network security groups thank you